So here are the keys for my Chickering Concert Grand Piano art case. And so you're looking at the ones that have mostly been cleaned. You can see they're still a little yellowing. And then you can see the ones that have not been cleaned, which are still in a mess and very yellow. So I used a very old trick. And if you've got ivory keys, and I know these might not look like ivory because they're not separated, uh, but they are. This was, like, I guess, done when you could get ivory in full blanks like this instead of uh, short pieces. Um, the trick is, you can see the difference there between the two, cleaned and uncleaned, really well. And so I'll show you the trick. It's called Real Lemon Juice. So what you do, uh, it has two functions actually, which is really cool for, because uh, ivory is a natural material, the oils in the, uh, in the lemon juice uh, fortify it and uh, make it less brittle. Uh, and also will, the acid will lift a lot of the crap right out of the pores of the, of the ivory uh, and make it kind of sticky on the surface. So um, I have, basically painted lemon juice a combination of real lemon juice and uh, and as you saw lemon extract um, and I used to keep the pulp in it too because that um, really helps to kind of act as a, a scrubber so you kind of paint it on with the paintbrush like you can see there the small paintbrush um, onto the keys and then just leave them overnight if or you know during the day whatever it, if you can leave them in the sunlight that's the best um, but you don't actually have to uh, but I left these uh, overnight um, uh, with the lemon juice on them and once I've uh, uh, I'm ready to clean them up I basically just get some water and uh, sorry, Ooh. a wet sponge, a wet a sponge, and give it a quick clean to clean the stickiness off. Uh, and then I dampen them and uh, use the scour uh, again to uh, clean the majority of the crap off. And then there's usually just a light yellow kind of film left, um, which I give a quick buff with some very high a very fine steel wool and then I keep the key lubricated with water at all times too I don't ever do it dry and then uh, a, a really fast buffing with uh, you know a regular uh, buffing pad um, and then finally what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide on and it'll just kind of take off all the residual stuff that might be on there and then uh, buff them on the buffing wheel and they will look like pearls like they were original now this piano as you can see this is very this is not a modern piano action this is a brown action that comes from a chickering piano and that's what this is a ch chickering concert grand six foot six uh, purportedly from 1840 uh, though I'm still trying to check that and make sure that it's true because um, my understanding was is that Chickering was making straight strung uh, grand pianos and not cross strung ones. They hadn't come up with that. They were the ones who came up with that, by the way. Um, but this appears to be cross strung, and if it's the dating is right, then it's kind of exceptional. I'm not sure why it would be. So you see, you have the back checks there, and you've got the jack uh, attached to the keys. You can again, you can see the difference once I've used a little wire brush, a little wire, uh, copper wire brush, brass wire brush to uh, uh, just give a, a light brushing to the wood to take the embedded dust out of it uh, and uh, recondition the the, uh, the calf's leather on the uh, on the back checks, and you can see the difference. 
between the one set and the other set that have not been cleaned yet. So you can see the back checks mostly are really in perfect shape. I mean, this is unbelievable how old this is and how well engineered this is. I just, I'm astounded at the level of quality, the level of engineering, simplicity, in comparison to a modern Gerard uh, grand piano action, this is like uh, Henry Ford uh, made pianos in the 18th century. Anyway, uh, it's uh, coming along. <coughs> As you can see, the entire action is out, uh, and it's being restored. Pieces, each piece is being restored separately. Let me just show you the difference between the key ends. <laughs> of the ones that have been uh, restored and the ones that have not on the key ends. This is That's the hardest part, actually, and how they became so filthy, I just don't know. It, it's just incredible just how bad they are. But you can see um, what I have to deal with here in order to get this off. But it's coming off really easily, and like I said, it's mostly lemon juice and a little bit of elbow grease, and uh, mostly that, uh, that does it. And, uh, these keys are so old that I can literally tell where this person played the majority of the time. <laughs> Whoever owned this piano, I can tell. Because the keys have very slight indentations from the fingers, which is really, really cool. These feel so rough because all the stuff has come to the surface and these feel like smooth as silk. So, anyway. I will keep you posted. Um, I've got some work downstairs in the shop uh, that I've been doing. I'm remaking uh, about 10 hammers that uh, were replaced over the years with more modern ones, um, which in my opinion as a, as a carpenter are inferior. I mean, they're good, I suppose, but they're inferior to the level of quality engineering that uh, d this was made with and the woods in, in particular. Uh, the hammers appear, the original hammers appear to be mahogany, and that's what I'm replacing them with uh, very old North American mahogany. It's been seasoned, sitting for a hundred years, maybe longer, as long as this piano, as old as this piano, probably, that I fortunately have. Uh, I also have most of the other kinds of materials that are required, walnut and so on, if it were required. But mostly it's been small fixes, like, you know, a jack uh, came loose on, on a key, and I... Uh, I just re-glued it, the foot on one of the uh, damper uh, lifters was uh, replaced with, had been broken off and replaced with this screw. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so all in all, this was supposed to have been reconditioned in uh, 1960. Um, now, I'm not sure what the extent of that was, but... Um, and I don't like to cast aspersions in any way on anyone's capabilities, but to be honest, um, one of the fixes of the keys was, which is so ridiculous, they had litter of the action uh, hammers and under hammers was that they, it had literally been glued in place, so it couldn't, the key would just got, not go anywhere, and the spring uh, had been put in backwards, which was, it meant it wasn't actually attached to anything at all. So it was very, I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, um, I've begun cleaning the, the, the dirt and grease that was on these, uh, these felts was incredible. Uh, I'll just show you down here, you can get a sense of how bad it was, but it's so much cleaner now. I've cleaned most all of this up. Uh, I've polished up the, uh, the brass a little bit. They haven't been completely polished. They've just been um, worked with a little bit. As you can see, the strings are mostly in very good shape. You can still see the color of the original uh, copper. Um, and uh, the case is in fantastic shape. There were a few minor chips and things, which I've dealt with, uh, filled so far. Um, there was a, was a small crack in this leg, uh, but it wasn't anything major, so I've just done some filling and I'm going to come back and recolor and uh, touch these up with a little bit of shellac, as you can see here, 
usual places where you get damage like that. Things get a little... So you can see here a piece that hasn't been repaired. It's very... That pair, I'm still going to repair that. Oop, might not be the best. But you can see these ones have been repaired and they're almost ready. Some other gouges that were here that I've worked on. Here we have some missing uh, uh, veneers, but I, I, I didn't want to go to the trouble of making new veneers. I, in such a small area, I, I know I can fill that completely and uh, those little cracks and then recolor them and you won't notice them. Uh, a couple of other small ones here, the usual places. Now once these are recolored and buffed out, you won't even notice that they were there. So that's all for now. Take care.